Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to a new episode of When You're Delusional, You're Gonna Be On TikTok. I do hope you're gonna enjoy the video, so let's just get into it. What will make a woman happy is having a family, serving her husband, raising the next generation. And do these trad wives understand that the only way that that model can work is if men have no free will and can never leave them? Like, it's all well and good to find fulfillment in cultivating a long-term romantic relationship. It's all well and good to want to raise children. And it's fine to seek fulfillment in the growing of your family and the maintaining of your family. But the traditional femininity and the trad wife approach puts women in a position where they have absolutely no way to make their own money, access to finances that is reliant upon the person they're married to, and no true independence. So what happens when he leaves you? Because marriage is no guarantee that you're going to be with that person forever. Divorce is legal and it is common. And what's more, if you are married to the kind of guy who also buys into the strong gender roles ethos of the traditional model, then he buys into the other patriarchal and misogynistic bull too that values in a woman youth, skinniness, prettiness, and subservience, which are all things that as a woman you are going to have less and less of as you get older. So maybe we would all be trad wives if men could never leave us, and if our relationships could never end, but they can, and they do, and in most cases they will. And in reality, they don't. Yes, almost half of the marriages end in divorce, but almost 80% of the times, it's women who file for divorce. So pretty much everything you said is invalidated by that last statement. Also, my wife is great. She's amazing. Everything is in place when I come home from work so we can enjoy each other's company and enjoy the time together. So this is the reason why I'm gonna file for divorce. Said no man ever. Any man that was married for 20, 30, 40 years will always say, we've been together and I love that we got to grow all together. She was there right by my side when we were building our family together. It will never be I stayed with her because she never lost her beauty. But on one hand we have those women and on the other hand we have you. And I can perfectly understand why no man ever wanted to be by your side. It's no secret that in marriages, a disproportionate share of the household labor is still undertaken by women. And a lot of this labor falls under what's called the mental load. It's all the thinking, anticipatory, and management work that goes into running a household. And it can include everything from keeping track of schedules, to restocking the groceries, to tracking medical appointments and organizing extracurriculars, arranging help, vacations, packing schedules, birthdays, whatever. In 2019, sociologist Alison Daminger published a study showing that women still do the vast majority of this work. And she concluded that there are four main categories. One is anticipating needs. For example, our child's birthday is next month. Second is identifying options for fulfilling those needs. Should we host the party at home? The third is making decisions. We'll have to have the party at this park, buy this food, buy these decorations and invite these people. And the fourth is monitoring progress. We have five RSVPs so far and we're still waiting on five more from these people. Not only did Deminger find that women do more of this kind of labor, but she also found that this kind of labor and its division can be a frequent source of conflict among couples. One familiar response to this is, you should have asked. Of course, you should have asked implies that it is the asker's responsibility to notice what needs to be done and if she doesn't want to do the task to delegate the task accordingly ironically more mental load yeah ironically it seems i always need to take time i don't have to do some research so i went on that oecd dot stat that you were talking about or showing as an example and i found nothing what a big surprise about the mental labor you were talking about i did found this and i went through every single link and found nothing maybe i was just lucky or unlucky so let's talk about the study you were talking about using 70 in-depth interviews with members of 35 couples i'm sorry but i'm gonna need more than 35 and even 
even in those 35, we're talking about mental workload, whatever, mental labor. Are the wives in those households working? Are they stay-at-home moms? Are they stay-at-home wives? Even still, US has a population of 331 million. Obviously, there are not gonna be 150 million marriages because it doesn't work like that, but still, you're gonna need more than 35 couples if you want to make a valid point. As far as I'm concerned, that survey is completely irrelevant. This is a huge red flag. The only men who like to go overseas to find a partner is men who like to prey on vulnerable women. Because when you go find a wife in the Philippines or Thailand or Eastern Europe or wherever these places are that are overseas, I'm assuming you mean they're more biddable, that they're less outspoken, they don't demand anything of you, that they're just happy to be rescued from their poverty-stricken life of no opportunity, and in return, all they have to do is subject themselves to your advances. So I do wonder at your motivation for why you want to go overseas to find a partner. Is it because you prefer your woman biddable, without opinions, unable to fight back, and vulnerable? Because if that's the case, you know what that makes you, right? Well, it could be just me, but what makes them is sick and tired of your entitlement. Maybe they're not looking for vulnerable women. Maybe they're looking for fit and feminine women. That's why they're going overseas. Whatever the case may be, it's obvious that they can't stand to be around you. You felt so entitled that you pretty much called every woman from those second world country or third world country that you were talking about, as I'm pretty sure that's how you consider those countries. Stupid uneducated, unable to think for themselves, and unable to make their own decisions. When in reality, they're highly educated, they're highly intelligent, and they're extremely beautiful. What they are not as a majority is ran through or single mothers. And that's the real reason why men go overseas to find wives. I'm in Mexico right now, and now I'm a believer about the woman here. American woman and Mexican woman are not the same. They're completely different. Bro, it's almost like they are different tribes. Most girls you see in LA are like, oh, I'm a queen, boss, B, and they're not even that cute. Here, I swear, I'm not joking. Girls are like eight, nines, and tens, and you guys know I don't like to use numbers, but you know what I mean. And they are super proud. They're super, and we're proud, I mean, just like they carry themselves, they super warm-hearted, they open, they're not as bougie, they're not arrogant. And the biggest thing, they don't care about having intimacy with so many people to chase validation. They still believe in love. They are way easier to be around. Uh, try it out for yourself. The Western social media culture brainwashed these young girls into, yeah, girl, you a boss B, and they need to learn how to handle you. What do you mean handling you? This is supposed to be a relationship. All right, you wonderful people, and that's gonna be it for today. As always, I do hope you enjoy the video. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.